example, the students today's agenda is to check homework. We'll be solving quadratic equations and you will be able to do 1.4. Today's students will be able to solve quadratic equations with complex solutions. And so we'll continue using the quadratic formula. Uh, we started using it in the previous lesson, but now you are going to come up with complex solutions. Okay, and what does that mean? It just means that you are going to have imaginary number in the roots or solutions. And so what is the, the quadratic formula? If you remember, it's x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And again, a is always with x squared. So in this case, since we don't have a coefficient, a is 1. b is the coefficient of x with no exponent. It's also 1. And c is it's also one, it's the constant. See, it will always be by itself with no variable. And so x is equals to negative b, negative from the formula, b is one, plus minus the square root of b square, meaning one square minus four times a is one, times c, times c is one divided by 2 times a, which is 1. And so this is negative 1 plus minus the square root of 1 square means 1 times 1. So it's 1. And then negative 4 times 1 is negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. We divide that by 2 times 1, which is 2. And so negative 1 plus minus the square root of 1 minus 4 is negative 3 divided by 2. And we learned that the square root of negative 3 is the same as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of positive 3. So basically, we're just separating the negative. And we also learned that anytime we have a negative 1, that becomes the imaginary number. Okay, and we just keep it as square root of 3 because square root of 3 doesn't have a simplified rational number. Okay, and so that's going to be replacing this part. So our answer is going to be x is equals to negative 1 plus minus. Instead of square root of negative 3, it's going to be imaginary square root of 3 divided by 2. There's nothing that we can simplify uh, in here, so that's it for the answer. If you need to see more examples about simplifying negatives or the explanation of i and i squared, then you can go to the first lesson in this. Okay, let's go to number 2. Again, x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So x is equal to the values of a, which is 1, b is 3, and c is 6. So x is equal to negative b, so negative 3, plus minus the square root of b squared, meaning 3 squared, minus 4, minus 4 from the formula, times a, which is 1, times c, which is 6, divided by 2 times a, 2 times 1. And so that gives us negative 3 plus minus the square root of, we can simplify these two parts now. 3 squared means 3 times 3, which is 9. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4, times 6 is negative 24, divided by 2 times 1 is 2. And so that gives us negative 3 plus minus 9 minus 24 is negative 15, divided by 2. And so let me show you that 15 can be simplified. If you have negative 15, that means negative 1 for the negative times 
negative 15, I mean, square root of 15. But in here, the only two factors is three times five. Three times five, we don't have any pairs. So those, those stay lonely, which means they stay inside of the square root. That's why we cannot simplify anything out like we did in the previous lesson. So now we are just going to write it as negative three, let me fit it in here very tightly, plus minus the imaginary number that comes from here, right? Negative one is imaginary and the 15 cannot be simplified so it stays inside of the radical or square root divided by two. Again, negative three cannot be divided by two, and neither can I, so I, not me. <laughs> and so we're just gonna leave it as negative three plus minus imaginary multiplied by square root of 15 all over two. Number three, again, x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus four ac all over 2a. A is 2. B is equals to negative 4. C is positive 11. And so we start replacing negative stays because it's part of the formula. B is negative 4. So you have to put here a parenthesis and then negative 4. And that will actually make it positive. When when the b is negative, at the end, it, this ends up being positive. Bring down the plus minus square root of b squared. We put it between parentheses because it's negative, and that's going to be squared. And then minus 4 times a, which is 2 this time, is not a 1, and c is 11. Divided by 2 times a. A is 2. So negative times negative is the big plus. Okay, and so that's positive 4 plus minus the square root of negative 4 squared means negative 4 times negative 4. Okay, and negative times negative becomes positive 16. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 times 11 is negative 88 divided by 2 times 2 is 4 then we bring down the 4 the plus minus square root of 16 minus 88 is negative 72 divided by 4 and we're going to simplify the negative 72 over here it means square root of negative 1 times square root of 72. The negative 1 becomes imaginary number. And for the 72 is 2 times 36. And then in here, again, you can uh, do prime factorization all the way if you get confused. But some people already see that this is a perfect square. So it's 6 times 6, right? Remember that for each pair... You cross one out and then take out the other one. Something very important. This one that, that goes outside is going to go on the left of the imaginary number. And then this lonely one is going to stay inside of the square root. And that's going to go on the right of the imaginary number. Okay. Again, whole number to the left of I. A radical or square root to the right. Okay. Yeah, this is called radical or the square root. So now that we have it simplified, we're going to write 4 plus minus and write that in here. So 6 imaginary square root of 2 all over 4. And so this is what we're going to do. Again, uh, we have to see if there is anything that can be simplified. So we use the pretzel. And I'm going to write the answers in. Again, what does this mean? It means that you're going to simplify this part first. So half of the pretzel and four divided by four is one. 
bring down the plus minus. For 6 over 4, you cannot divide 6 divided by 4, but you can simplify both of them. Both have half, so divide by 2, divide by 2. And so 6 divided by 2 is 3. Bring down the i and the square root of 2. Divided by 4 divided by 2 is 2. And so that's how your answer will be. One, one part can be simplified as a whole number, the other one doesn't. And again, these are your two solutions or roots. For number four, I'm going to uh, solve it in two different ways. So the first thing that I want you to notice is that this one has only two terms. So that means that one of these uh, A, B, or C will be zero. And so you have to be very, very careful to which of the variables you give the zero, okay? So A is always with the X squared. Okay, x squared, so that means that the coefficient is 1. b is always with x, but in here we don't have a term with x, so that's the one that should be 0. In here we have a constant, so c will be 36. Again, how do you know b will always be with x? c will always be with no variable. Okay, very important to see the difference between these two especially. Okay, so we start x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And I know it can get annoying when you hear the song so many times, but my students have said, teacher, it was annoying, but that song was stuck on my head all the way home. And at the time of the test, it helped me. <laughs> okay, so negative b, negative 0 plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 0 squared, minus 4 times 1 for a, times 36 for c, divided by 2 times a, which is 1. And so in here, negative 0 is just 0, so it disappears. And you're going to have plus minus, right? So this one, basically, it's not going to be there. This also... 0 squared is just 0, so we might as well just get rid of it now. And so we're going to have negative. 4 times 1 is 4, and 4 times 36. 4 times 6 is 24, carry 2. 4 times 3 is 12, 13, 14. Divided by 2 times 1 is 2. In math 2, I recommended, and even module G, I recommended that you memorize the first 15 perfect squares. This is one of those. And so you will have plus minus uh, square root of the negative is imaginary number. And the square root of 144 is 12. But whole number equals on the left. So let me write that again. So square root of 144 is 12. Square root of the negative one is imaginary and divided by 2. And in this case, we don't have to simplify anything here, so we only have half of this pretzel. Bring down the plus minus. 12i divided by 2 is 6i. And those are going to be the answers. Okay? So that's all for this lesson. If you can please give us a thumbs up. Subscribe around here. This is the list of the entire unit. And this will be the next lesson. Now you're able to do 1.4 and have fun.